so next session, uh, let's welcome Adolf, uh, senior software engineer from Google, and also Yuki, um, software engineer from Cyber Agent. So, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, we are going for a little bit of a turn. Uh, we're not talking about AI directly. We're talking a, a little bit about infrastructure right now. So uh, we wanted to introduce to you uh, this batch system that we call Q. Uh, myself and Yuki here are the maintainers of this project. Uh, we, we started it like around two years ago, but surprisingly, we just met face to face today. <laughs> So, um, first of all, uh, why are we talking about this, this topic? Why, is, why, why do we need to do job queuing? Uh, or if you wanna call it training, why, why do we need to tra uh, queue the training jobs? Um, well, in this world we have too many jobs and of course, as we have heard in the previous talks, there is limited resources. GPUs are scarce, TPUs are scarce. Um, if you're running on-prem, uh, you have a fixed amount of resources, so you cannot scale up, right? But if you're in the cloud, you are, of course, competing with other, other customers uh, that all, all of them want GPUs and accelerators. Uh, and you might get discounts, so you want to manage your, your discounts, uh, and of course, you want to scale. Um, so, wh uh, what is Q? Well, Q is a system designed to solve these problems, uh, and it does so by offering um, resource quota management. Um, so by means of uh, uh, defining quotas in, for your cluster, uh, the goal is to maximize the utilization of these scarce resources uh, uh, that you, uh, you work hard to, to obtain. Um, and in this model, Q offers a model with a two-level hierarchy so that uh, you can define um, um, guaranteed quotas for certain tenants for your teams, but also allow to borrow uh, so that uh, one, when one team is not using the resources, uh, other teams have the chance to borrow such uh, unused resources. Um, and we also need uh, to establish some preemption, some, some uh, priority-based ordering, uh, because not all jobs are, uh, have the same importance. And when you have a job that is higher priority and everything is full, you might want to preempt. So all of this is offered. Uh, another um, aspect of Q is uh, fungibility. What does this mean? Uh, so your jobs might be able to run in a variety, variety of resources. Maybe your jobs can run on different models of GPUs. Uh, or maybe uh, your cloud provider offers different uh, tiers of uh, availability. So like maybe you have reservations, you have uh, on-demand machines, or you have spot VMs. So all of these, uh, your jobs might be able to run on all these um, different uh, uh, resources. But you might want to say, well, I want to consume my reservation first. I want to consume my uh, on-demand first, and so on and so forth, or, or in GPU models. So all of these concepts can be expressed in uh, a Q cluster. Um, so uh, Q um, is, uh, is a job queuing system, right? Uh, so uh, you, uh, when, you, when you use Q, you don't queue pods per se. You queue the overall jobs. Because your jobs can have like 1,000 pods, uh, 10,000 pods, et cetera. We don't want to queue all those pods individually. We want to queue them as a unit. So uh, queue, uh, for, to, to accomplish this, queue supports a variety of uh, APIs, uh, CRDs. Uh, the, the, the most prominent one is, of course, the job API. But we also support the job set API. We support all of Qflow, uh, thanks to Yuki here. 
Um, we also support Ray job. Uh, and last, in the, in the last release, we also support plain pods because some users uh, are still in their journey to migrate from bare pods to other uh, higher level CRDs. So we want to support them to use Q uh, in the meantime. Uh, Q is extensible. Um, so if you have a custom CRD that defines your job, you can uh, use a, a library that we provide to uh, um, integrate uh, job, uh, integrate your CRD with, with Q. And this is a new feature uh, as well uh, in the last release, um, which allows you to customize uh, certain rules for when your jobs should be admitted. Uh, Yuki will explain a little bit uh, more detail into this in a bit. Um, why, why choose Q? Um, well, Q, first of all, is a Kubernetes project. Uh, so uh, Q is sponsored by the SIG scheduling, uh, the, the special interest group on, on scheduling, um, but also the roadmap is discussed in the working group batch of, uh, of Kubernetes. And does it, what does this mean? It means that uh, when we are developing the roadmap for Q, we talk to SIG apps, we talk to uh, SIG auto scaling, of course SIG scheduling, and we build, uh, we uh, influence each other's roadmap to, to advance Q and to advance the, the, the batch system. And with this, uh, one important thing to note is that Q is not a scheduler. Q is a separate component that is compatible with all the existing uh, components of Kubernetes. So it's of course compatible with Q scheduler and with this, also, it, it means that it's also compatible with any other scheduler. We've seen in the, in the community some people using Unicorn with Q uh, and using Volcano with Q. Uh, it's compatible with the controller manager, the, the job API and so forth, and uh, also compatible with cluster autoscaler. So uh, Q uh, is, was built with uh, autoscaling in mind from the, from the beginning. And we have adopted a, a cadence re a release cadence of uh, around three months. So, uh, and our late, latest release was just two weeks ago, uh, our 0 0.6 release. Oh, are you hearing me? Okay, oh. Uh, yes, uh, I want to explain about uh, differences on the Q operation flow between B0.4 and 0.5, the latest version 0.5. Uh, as a first, uh, let me explain the uh, flow in the previous version B0.4. Q assumes uh, the situation that there are cluster admins and cluster users. In this slide, uh, I named a cluster admin just admin. Uh, cluster user researcher. As a preparation, uh, admin uh, needs to define cluster queue, resource flavor, local queue. Uh, by the preparation, admin can set capacity queues. After preparation by admin, researcher can create job. Once job is submitted by researchers, Q admits, that, Q admits the job if capacity is free. The job is uh, unsuspended and is injected node affinity. Uh, we can specify node affinity in the resource flavors to schedule job to the nodes with specific features. For example, with hardware accelerator and with specific Life cycle, life cycle, like uh, preemptive or uh, spot instances. After that, job controller like uh, batch job, QPro training <coughs> operator, uh, and QBRA uh, creates pods uh, for job. Then created pods. Uh, are scheduled to nodes by cube scheduler. 
Finally, when there isn't enough on the node, class autoscaler scale out the cluster. It means pods are created with pending status. This slide is uh, B0.5. Main difference is for the flow uh, step 2.1 and 2.2 .2 in this slide. Uh, so we can add arbitrary checks before jobs are admitted by implementing custom controller on our servers. For example, we can implement cloud cost checker, then it could, if cloud usage exceeds budget, we can stop the PQ job. Also, uh, we powered the cluster autoscaler integrations based on external checker. Until B0.4, cluster autoscaler will provision more nodes triggered by the queue pending pods. So there are the situations that jobs and scheduled to the any nodes in spite of the queue. However, since the latest release B0.5, queue can request to provision more nodes to cross autoscaler via provisioning request. By this feature, we can allow queue to queue the job only in the case of cluster resources are enough. Next, I want to talk about queue use cases in production. We will introduce two use cases. The first one is my company cyber agent use case. My company has an internal on-premise ML platform with a static computing. The cluster has a multi-tenancy and exists more than 200 namespaces for users. Also, the cluster has multiple kinds of GPUs, NVIDIA, H1, H100, A100. In general, such a cluster called, the, called by heterogeneous em environment. The main workloads are training machine learning models, Jupyter Notebook, and serving machine learning models. In these workloads, we are using open source framework, Kubeflow training jobs, KSAT. Also, almost workloads need GPUs. Regarding Q usage, only training and Jupyter Notebook are managed by Q. Serving is evaluating in the test environment. After the next slides, I will show you details on each workload. First is training. In our platform, there are many kinds of training workloads, like computer vision, voice recognition, and so on. One much more impacting workload is training large language models. We are building LLM trained by English and Japanese open data sets. And the training jobs are managed by upstream Q and Kubeflow job. Uh, MPI job uh, create two role pods, launcher and workers. Launcher is role to perform NPR and command. Workers is a role to perform actual training process. In other words, training processes are NPR rank or NPR process. <coughs> Launcher and worker role must be started success successful. If either role fails to start, 
the whole MPI job failed. So I introduced the sequential admission with Rayleigh post, that is Q built in feature. When we don't use the feature, Q decodes the next job regardless of whether the decode job bots are ready. However, however, we when we enable this feature, Q will block the decode the next job until the queued job bots are ready. The next workload is Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is so popular tool to develop models and analyze data. My company is provides a Jupyter Notebook to researchers based on a single replica set to set without all scaling. However, as a built-in feature, Q doesn't support queuing set for set. So I developed the minimal, mi minimum, minimal Kubernetes custom controller. The controller implements Q generic job interface and expresses a suspense semantics based on annotation and the number of replicas. Also, Q started to support the plain ports since the latest Q version B0.5. So I'm evaluating the plain port queuing feature with Jupyter Gateway Provisioner. In this, in this slide and next slide, I want to show the, some cases to set capacities by cluster queue. The first case is, is coexistence of user, user and admin capacities. In general, the researcher's workload has higher priority than platform developers' workloads. So we define the admin capacity as an entirely wrapped, entirely wrapped with user capacity. Then only borrowing limit is defined in the admin capacity. Once user jobs are submitted to the queue, admin jobs are preempted. Next case is semi-guaranteed semi -guaranteed capacity for important projects. I defined the two-level user capacity for cluster queue. The first one is capacities for important project from a business perspective. The capacity is defined as a separate from a shared cluster queue to guarantee the capacity. Every other project and users are assigned to shared cluster queue. Shared cluster queue can borrow resources from project cluster queue when they are free in project cluster queue. Uh, next, uh, I want to show a different case study. This case is not a particular customer. Uh, as you know, uh, GK is a cloud provider, so uh, we've talked with different customers um, and how they are using Q uh, or, how, or how they are planning to use Q. Um, so, and we've uh, come up with a few uh, common, um, common ways, common uh, architectures in which uh, they, they can serve the u their users. Uh, and we've built this uh, reference architecture. Um, so what is the goal of this reference architecture? Um, well, again, we have scarce resources and we want to maximize the utilization. And on the other hand, we want to control the cost. Uh, so in this environment, uh, of course, we have multiple research teams. Each, each research team might have different priorities, also different sizes. Um, and then from the infrastructure point of view, 
we have uh, VM instances with different uh, availability levels. First of all, you can have a reservation. Uh, reservation is the idea that uh, you buy in bulk, uh, that, uh, you, buy, you buy multiple VMs in bulk at a discount price. Um, so, and, but that's already guaranteed for, for, for you as a, as a customer. Um, but then you could also uh, uh, purchase on-demand VMs, which might be subject to stockouts. Um, or you can also uh, buy spot VMs, which are cheaper, but then you, um, you are subject to preemption at the VM level. So you have all these different levels of uh, uh, availability for your resources. And uh, this is more of a, a decision from the customer side. Um, they want to have two levels of, of uh, quality of service for their jobs. For example, well, they would have a standard job which uh, should run on reservations, but if the reservations are full, uh, they want to be able to burst to on-demand. And then they also have uh, best effort jobs. Uh, these jobs should run on, uh, on the unused reservation, uh, but if they run out of space, they can burst to, uh, to spot. But what makes a job best effort is that they can be preempted if a standard job comes in. So this is the environment, uh, and then this is how it maps to uh, our, API, our APIs in, in Q. Um, VM availability levels, so reservation on demand and spot, can be represented with uh, the concept of resource flavor. Um, the combination of team, uh, research teams, and the job quality of service is a cluster queue. So if you think of a, a single team, a single team will have two queues, one for uh, standard and one for best effort. Uh, and the ability for all these uh, entities to uh, borrow resources from each other is uh, through this concept of cohort, which um, I'll show in a bit. So uh, here I'm zooming in into uh, one team. Uh, first of all, on the left side, you can see that we have the different uh, um, resource flavors, the different uh, VM availability. Uh, reservation on demand spot, and then we have here two cluster queues. Uh, both cluster queues are for the same uh, the same team. Or, or let's let's just call them queues. So uh, maybe it's a concept more familiar. Um, so we have two queues: uh, standard and best effort. And now here is where you can define uh, this fungibility concept that uh, we were talking about earlier. So. Uh, First of all, these uh, resource flavors are ordered. So because reservation is first, reservations are consumed first, then followed by on-demand, then followed by spot. Now, team, team A standard has a nominal quota of 20. This means that 20 units are reserved for this customer. Now, you define the units for each of the resources. So these 20 might be 20 CPUs or 200, or whatever you need, uh, or maybe 20 GPUs, uh, or a combination, CPUs, memory, and GPUs, and whatever resources you have. So I'm just using one number here for simplicity, but um, this means that, nominal quota means that this is reserved for you. Now, there is a borrowing limit of zero. This means that this cluster queue cannot borrow. Um, now, on the right side, the best effort actually has a zero nominal quota. It means that it doesn't have any allocate, any uh, reserve capacity. It can only borrow from the uh, resources on the, on the standard team. Uh, so whenever standard team is, uh, standard, the standard queue is not uh, in use, the best effort can use those resources. But whenever standard needs those resources back, it can preempt any jobs that are running uh, from best effort. Uh, then you can have a backup uh, queue, right? a backup uh, mm, uh, resource flavor. So if your reservation is full, you still want uh, some, uh, some bursting onto on-demand VMs. Uh, in this case, we are setting up the bursting to five 
for on demand. And on the best effort side, um, they can burst, but to cheaper, cheaper nodes, in this case, to uh, spot. So they also have a, a limit of five. And lastly, at the bottom, you can see the configuration for uh, preemption. Uh, again, on the left side, standard, it says reclaim within cohort any. So these two cluster queues belong to the same cohort. Uh, and this setting allows the standard cluster queue to kick out any, um, any jobs on the best effort cluster queue when they need the resources. The next setting is flavor fungibility. Uh, so when you, have a, when you have a queue, you have a, we, when you have a queue with multiple resource flavors, you have an option. So let's say reservation is full. Do you want to, uh, if you have the option to borrow, do you want to borrow? Or if you have, if you have the option to preempt, do you want to preempt? Or do you just wanna let that uh, job run and go to uh, the next flavor, so on demand? In this case, we've seen that customers prefer to preempt. So that's the setting. So uh, whenever your reservation is full, but you have a high priority job coming in, you want to kick out any jobs uh, on best effort on the reservation before you move on to on demand. So this setting allows you to do that. And best effort doesn't have this setting because, well, it doesn't generally, uh, it cannot preempt in most scenarios. So this is the team A. And similarly, we can uh, define team B uh, with two queues. Uh, as you can see, we have added some borrowing limits so that uh, the best effort uh, cluster queue uh, in, in, the spots, um, in the spot flavor can borrow from the best effort quota on team B. So all of these uh, queues are in the same uh, cohort. And, he, and of course, as, as you have more teams, you can expand uh, more. And if you want to isolate a group of teams, you can create a separate cohort. So each cohort can only borrow resources from each other. Uh, and that's the concept of the two-level hierarchy. Um, so with that, uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about what's next for Q. Um, so we have a few things in top of mind and nothing here is final as we just finished the release two weeks ago of 0 0.5. Um, so, but these are the things that are top of our mind that we are discussing. Um, first of all is on-demand visibility of pending jobs. We have some visibility today uh, about uh, where your jobs are in the queue, but uh, users are requesting uh, more, uh, more fine-grained data and uh, we are building a new API that is more performance to allow, that allows us to do, to do this. Uh, the next thing is support for groups of plain pods. We already support plain pods, but, uh, but as individual jobs, uh, we are working on the pod groups. Uh, we are also thinking about extra policies for requeuing. So when, when you send a job somewhere and it doesn't run because we have a stock out or something like that. Uh, users want to be able to reclaim that uh, job and put it back into the queue, put it in a different availability level. Uh, we are working through that, that, uh, those ideas and hierarchical cohorts. We, as, as I said, we have a two-level hierarchy. Um, users want to run in larger organizations and they want to be able to uh, run what we call a hero job which is a job that basically can use the entire cluster if needed. So uh, for that, we need uh, extra levels of hierarchy. So that's also uh, in discussion. And to a lesser degree, we're also talking about um, multi-cluster support, which we, will, uh, we plan to implement through admission checks. Workflow, workflows, so think of Argo and things like that. We don't want, as Q, we don't want to implement workflows. We, but we want workflow uh, orchestrators to work with Q. So Argo or um, Tecton uh, or Snakemake, if you're familiar, all of, those, all of these tools, we're working on a, a way to integrate them so that they just work with Q. And serving is also something in our mind with KServe. 
Um, so if you have any thoughts about, about these topics, uh, feel free to reach out through, through the issue, or you can find us in the working group batch uh, in, the, the, in the Kubernetes Slack. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for the great talk. Uh, I think we have time to take one question. Anyone have a question? There's a mic in the middle of the room if you have questions. Oh, there's one question from here. If no one uses the mic in the middle of the room, I'm going to give mic to you. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question about how does this compare with uh, traditional schedulers like Slurm? Like how, how does the Q and Slurm compare in functionality? Yes, um, there is a few different ways to look at this. Uh, first of all, Q is Kubernetes native, so it uses all the components, uh, CRDs and all of, all of uh, these tools that uh, Kubernetes users are familiar with. Um, now, um, there is uh, another aspect of it where, again, Q is not, um, Q is not a scheduler, uh, so it's not directly comparable with Slurm, um, but at the same time, if you have, um, for example, we, we have seen uh, Sunk earlier today and there is uh, the Livermore National Laboratory also working on like Slurm in a box, right? So, uh, or, or they have this uh, other framework, it's the Flux framework, which they are packing in a box. So uh, basically each researcher can have its own mini cluster or a cluster within Kubernetes. Uh, so they are able to run in this uh, closed environment but then if you have multiple researchers, you want to be able to distribute, distribute these quotas, um, uh, distribute the quota of the cluster among these multiple researchers. So there is, um, there is ways to think about this in, in which Q is not uh, a competitor of, of Slurm, but it, it could be complementary. Um, now, in terms of tooling, yes, we, we, uh, Slurm has a, a long history. In terms of tooling, uh, we, are still, we still don't have a CLI, for example, which is something that Slurm, like Slurm users are very familiar with. Um, so that's something top, uh, also in our minds uh, to, to address. Uh, same with the dashboard, things that are still in our mind, but we are working on core features at the moment, so we didn't look into those yet. Um, hoping I <laughs> yeah, thank you very question. much.